This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Really? Oh, we're in town! Going to the grocery store! Having finished up an after-school trip to the supermarket by the station, where I picked up three days' worth of food, I'm briskly making my way back to the dorm. The contents of the plastic supermarket bag dangling from my hand? Six cans of vegetables and beans, a head of lettuce, a box of corn cereal, a carton of milk, and a bottle of oolong tea. Not something that I get at the store, personally. If Amine happened to see this assortment of groceries, she'd probably get on my case about my tragically bland diet. Not that I can really argue with that description. The thing is, though, my appetite is borderline defective. I almost never get the urge to eat anything in particular. Since I don't have much in the way of preferences, my simplistic food choices are only natural. It's not really something I can change about myself. I mean, hey, you know what? That's probably a thrifty way to go. There were stretches of my life where my diet consisted entirely of hard old bread, so crusty I had to soak it in water before I could sink my teeth into it. Compared to that, anything seems delicious. I guess that's true. My private cell phone begins to buzz in the pocket of my uniform, emitting that familiar electronic jingle. It's just as unpleasant now as it was the first time I heard it. More spam was my first thought. But after my classmates seized my email addresses a few days ago, I've been getting messages from them relatively frequently. Oh boy. The most frequent sender would be Amine. Of course! Her messages are most often, Where are you at the moment? type inquiries about my situation. No, she's using this to stalk us. I knew this would happen! Followed by, What do you want to eat tonight? style survey questions about the dinner menu, which tend to leave me racking my brains for an answer. And finally, Limited time sale, 4pm today. Buy a pack of large eggs from Shue and other requests to run errands for her. Mixed in with Amine's frequent messages, I've also gotten mail from Sachi. Really? Things like, I have discovered a beehive hanging under the roof of the PE warehouse. I'm sending this message in the hope that you might be able to exist, <laughs> assist in the extermination. <laughs> that one's a pretty typical example. They tend to be polite invitations to join in unified peacekeeping operations around the school. Wow. Well, since those messages at least approach meaningful communication, they're comparatively not too bad. After all, there was the, that one email from Michiru that arrived in the middle of the night. After opening that particular message, I stared at the screen blankly for a good three seconds before finally cocking my head to the side in a rare gesture of complete confusion. The mail's contents! Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, die, 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 A simple litany of angry words. Wow. And although I tried to remember whether I'd done anything to offend Michiru lately, no satisfactory explanation presented itself. Dang, she's giving death threats now, that's not good. Which isn't to say nothing came to mind, of course. If anything, so many things occurred to me that it was hard to pin down any one particular incident that might have inspired her wrath. But when I met Michiru the next morning and brought it up, apparently, while in bed that night, some stupid little mistake she'd made a long time ago popped into her head. Unable to sleep from irritation, she'd taken it out on me via email. And the mistake in question? Back in elementary school science class, the teacher had asked everyone to name any fish they could think of. So Michiru raised her hand energetically and shouted out sushi, earning the ridicule of her classmates. Oh. I, I've been there remembering just embarrassing things you did, like, 20 years ago. <laughs> in other words, pretty much the most idiotic thing in the world to be losing sleep over after years the f after the fact. Imagine, if you can, the exasperation and exhaustion I felt. Anyway, among all these messages, the only one to make me laugh was sent by Sakaki. She sent us something? I had assumed I wouldn't get a single email from her in the first place. So it was a bit of a surprise just to receive that message, but the real issue was its contents. To be specific, the message contained all of four letters. Test. Of course, one could interpret this as the condensed form of a more expressive message. <laughs> that is definitely what she was intending. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what is wrong with this guy's brain? <laughs> but somehow, I think not. Probably, no, pretty much definitely she sent it solely for the purpose of confirming that the mail would be delivered properly. That sort of methodical caution for its own sake seemed very much like Sakaki. I sent a concise received in reply to her message, and haven't received another sent from her since. Well then, who's it from this time? I open the email folder on my phone with a feeling of mild embarrassment, but the title of the message is an instant letdown. Will you be my papa? What? Guys, we have to destroy our cell phone and leave the country. From the title alone, it's pretty clearly spam. I have no idea where they get my email address, since I've never given it out to anyone but my classmates. 
but this sort of garbage arrives at a pretty decent clip. I work for a company in the business of information, and we've got a pretty nice database. But sometimes I think a bunch of people trying to sell me phony Viagra just might have the superior intelligence network. <laughs> While reflecting on the spammer's frightening abilities, I press the delete button, but at that moment my eyes jump to the name of the sender, and I pause in utter confusion. From Irisu Machina. Oh no. This is not good. Machina? I cancel the deletion command, open the bizarrely titled email, and quickly look over the contents. Hello, this is Makina Onichan. Allow me to express my sincere congratulations on your continuing good health. Or, I'm sorry, Sinkiar. <laughs> In conclusion, this constitutes a formal announcement that you have officially leveled up from Onichan to Papa. Thank you very much for my consideration. Yours truly. Oh, barf. This is so cringeworthy. It's complete gibberish. The writing is all over the place. There are all sorts of strange typos, and not a single word was capitalized. Also, I have no idea what any of it is supposed to mean. Level up. Papa? What is this girl talking about? You are not calling me Papa. I will put a stop to that. Well, it, I wasn't expecting any message from her to be particularly well composed, but this is just too incoherent. Judging from this, I think it would take quite some time to unravel the mystery if we communicate through email. I type out a quick reply. I don't understand. Let's talk face to face. Okay, send. Awkwardly tapping out a few short words, I send back my response. Machina's reply arrives in less than a minute. Yavol! Why German? <laughs> Does she want me to meet in Valhalla, or what? Anyhow, it's uh, pretty obvious that finding that girl and talking face-to-face -face is the only way that this will get cleared up. Of course, even then, we're dealing with Machina here. Smooth mutual understanding may be too much to hope for. But at the very least, communication in person has none of the lag time of a text message. And unlike a cell phone, you can give the other party a good smack when necessary. Wow. I hurry back to the dormitory with my, and to my conference with Machina. Oh boy. This is not good. Fifteen minutes later, I pa pass through the school gate on my way back to the dorm. As if I'm cutting through the courtyard, I observe a bizarre object a little ways off. The rounded, soft-looking object in question lies slack on the brick-paved ground. To be more specific, it appears to be the corpse of a little girl. Wait, what? Or if you'd prefer a more idyllic phrasing, a young woman seems to have fainted. Oh, she's not dead then. This can't be happening. I let the plastic bag fall from my hand on the spot and rush to the girl's side. With every stride, her outline grows clearer, until at last the figure of the collapsed individual comes into sharp definition. Unruly curvy, curly hair that sticks out in every direction, a face as round as a dumpling, and the trademark touch of stupidity. Knee-high socks in two different colors. In every particular, it's Irisu Machina. She's just asleep, I bet. Hey! Machina! What's wrong? Magna is stretched out limply on the ground like a marionette cut from its strings. When I lift her up by the shoulders, her mouth flops open to reveal a white stick. What the heck is this? What? Judging by the happy music, she's definitely not dead. What is this? The thin white stick emerging from her mouth is clearly man-made, and it seems to be protruding from the depths of her throat. At a glance, it looks like the stick from a lollipop, but that can't be right, can it? Wave, wavering it between belief and doubt, I thrust my fingers inside Machina's mouth and pinch the white stick in question. I give it a hard yank, but whatever it is, it's lodged in there pretty firmly. Ugh. Damn it. Working against my brute force attempt, the stick is not only short and difficult to grasp, it's also slippery with Machina's saliva. It looks like it should pop right out, but it doesn't budge. I'm reminded of the legendary sword in the stone. What? Oh. That's... Ugh. Little punk, is this a trial? Pull me out if you can, and you'll be recognized as the hero of legend. I again grab the white stick in my fingers, then give Machina's back a harsh thump, as if encouraging a baby to spit out something inedible. <laughs> as Machina lets out a violent cough like a consumptive heroine from a Victorian-era novel, I pull the lollipop, mandarin orange flavor, free from her throat with a wet pop. Oh, I know you enjoy lollipops, but don't stick them all the way down your throat like that. <laughs> Oh, man. That that made me cringe a little. Imagine getting a lollipop so stuck in your throat that it won't budge. That's actually kind of frightening. Okay, how the hell did this happen? <laughs> Makina also might be narcoleptic. Don't fall asleep with a stick hanging out of your mouth. It's obviously dangerous. I mean, how old are you again? 
I mean, if I hadn't happened to pass by here, might she have ended up suffocating to death? No! As if deliberately demonstrating her complete indifference to my concerns, Makina casually offers me the same lollipop that I pulled out of her throat mere moments ago. That is gross. No! Cut it out! You do realize you almost suffocated on that lump of sugar just now, right? Don't eat lollipops when you're moving around! That can kill you if you fall! Okay, I think that's, that's maybe going a little far. Don't just sit on the ground! Eat the damn thing later! No, no, impossible, I can't do that! Don't put half-eaten candy in your damn skirt pocket! You're going to turn it into a sticky mess! <laughs> What's so funny, punk? I might be noticing that this a little late in the game, but is this girl mocking me? Calm yourself, Yuji. This is the way she is, right? Don't let her get to you. I press a hand to my forehead, heave a long heavy sigh, and firmly rub my temples. And? You planning to explain what that email was about? Did you just send that to everybody? Don't play dumb, I'm talking about this. I take my cell phone from my pocket, slide open the screen, and hold out it out so Makina can see. It's displaying the incoherent message she sent me just a few minutes ago. And I'm telling you, I don't understand what it means. That's why I'm asking you about it. You really shouldn't talk. Anyway, just tell me what you're trying to say here as thoroughly, concisely, and bluntly as possible. No. Papa? Yeah, this was definitely the title of the email as well, but... No, wait. What does she even mean by that? Tell me something, Makina. When you say Papa, do you mean a, like, Papa Q Bear Papa, or... No. What the heck? Are you seriously asking me to become your father? Or are you talking about more of a sugar daddy type deal? You're looking for money to play around with and you think I'm going to give it to you? That would be less weird. I will not be bribed. <laughs> what the heck? This is so weird and very uncomfortable. The hell? I'll give you money, so please be my papa? What the hell is that? Every step I take in this bizarre conversation seems to be taking me farther and farther away from understanding the situation. Okay, hold on. Think this over calmly, Yuji. There's still a possibility I'm making some ridiculous mistake here. No, I don't think so. Before blaming others, carefully consider the possibility that you're the one who screwed up. Very true. I had that one beaten into me enough, right? Can't go forgetting it now. Okay, Makina. Let's calm down and talk this over, alright? Why do you want a papa, exactly? Because <laughs> she killed him. <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> Why not? Why are you smiling and singing when you say that? That is very creepy. I see. Sorry to hear that. Um, no. No, I think you just need to start growing up a bit. This is very weird. <sighs> Nick, this is not a G stream. If I'm playing an M-rated game, chat doesn't have to stay G, but if I have the family friendly tag on, then yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I was going. I'm like, is she asking us to be like her parental substitute, or is she like asking us to be her like, again, kind of sugar daddy kind of thing? Either way, it's weird. Yeah, I, oh yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. <laughs> you do realize that Yuji's only like physically two years older than you, right? Although m mentally, he's a lot older than that. <laughs> this is very strange. You're talking about me. 
For the record, I'm mildly pissed off right now. But whatever, go on. Oh, I still think you're a weirdo for asking this. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I think you meant to say shallow there. It's Anomalaricus. No, never mind. Let's let's leave your pronunciation issues aside for the moment. Keep going. That also was kinda weird, but less so, because like no offense, you're kind of someone who needs... You need someone in your life to kind of show you the ropes. Because you don't seem to have matured to the level that you need to. That was still weird, but, like, I could kind of tolerate that. This is too much, though. And that's not how that works. That's the level up. This doesn't make sense, and this is weird. <sighs> A long, heavy sigh spills from my mouth. She's trying to buy herself a father. I absentmindedly ma massage the area between my eyebrows. I've developed a headache all of a sudden. Family isn't something you can buy with money. Doesn't everyone understand that? Then again, there are people out there who think they can erase their families with money, so I guess it's not surprising the opposite delusion exists as well. But more importantly, what in the world am I going to do about this one? Look, Machina, you seem to be working off a mistaken premise here. Let me clear it up for you, okay? A father isn't something you can replace with money. Ooh. True. Spare me the ooh. Hasn't anyone ever told you something like that before? Do you not have a mom or, like, any adult figures in your life who can teach you about this? What about your mother? She didn't explain any of this to you? Again, why are you saying that with a smile on your face? And if so, that really sucks. I see. Guess that makes sense then. Hmm. You're at a pretty fancy, expensive school for your mom to hate you, though. Your papa, though. When you say papa, what exactly are you expecting me to do? No, again, I think you just need somebody to help make you more independent. Did I ever protect you from harm? Or take good care of you, for that matter? And apparently I loved you on top of it all? News to me! If anything, I feel like I've treated her pretty roughly at times. Hard for me to say. I don't have a family, so I can't really comment. This is so weird. Figure it out, eh? They do say life is one long learning process, but... In the first place, am I really qualified to play this game? Can an irresponsible man like me call himself someone's father? Does a piece of trash like me have any right to? It's a brief sentence, and her tone of voice is casual, but all of a sudden it feels like my heart is being squeezed tight in my chest. Wow! <laughs> how is- Twitch, how is Jesus a bad word? Like, how? That is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I think- I think Machina needs the latter two, for sure. I think at this point she's too immature for a boyfriend. I, f I feel like if she entered a relationship, it might end with her getting taken advantage of. Or her not really know what she's getting into. Having said that, though, this sound this is looking like this is where the common route ends and we can potentially branch onto the Machina route. If that's the case, it could be that the Machina route is not actually a romantic one. It could be, like, more just if we're her substitute parental figure that we're, we teach her about the world and make her more independent, which, that actually could be cool. If this does turn into a romantic route, oh boy, is that gonna be... <laughs> it's a bad word for the religious... Um, I'm religious, and 
Oh, I don't see any problem with, with saying the word Jesus. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I'll leave it up to the mysteries of Twitch, because I think I just need to turn the Twitch auto mod settings down, because they also will say weird things like specific acronyms are bad when they're not. Uneasy. Yes, that's probably a good word for what I'm feeling right now. If a bit of an understatement. Do I have the strength to keep this girl safe? I don't want show money! Makana reaches into her skirt and pulls out a number of crumpled Ben 10,000 yen bills, along with some smaller change. When I count, it comes out to 86,000. For a kid's pocket money, this strikes me as somewhat excessive. The next thing to emerge from her skirt pocket is a gold card issued by a major credit card company. How do you have an American Express gold card? You're 14! <laughs> Compared to the premium or unlimited black cards, I suppose it's something of a toy. But definitely not the sort you'd expect a kid to be carrying around. Hey, Makina? If your mom hates you, how are you getting this much money from her? What the heck? The golden plastic card quivers in her hand. What if he says no? In that slight, uncontrollable trembling, Makina's terror of rejection is all too clear. I think I understand now why she's trying to buy my affection. She simply doesn't know any other way to get what she wants. This is probably how she was raised. When she went to her mother to talk about her troubles, she got a wad of money. This should take care of it. So that was how she learned to solve her problems. Oh, yeah, that's not good parenting, Mrs. Irisu. And she never had anyone to teach her what was wrong. Or that was wrong. What can I do for a girl like this? What can the likes of me possibly do for Makina? Oh boy, I do declare that we have an official choice to make. I'm going to save this on the final page. Just to keep track of it. All right, we can reject the money or we can accept the money. So this uh, this seems to be pretty clearly a root divergence, where depending on what we choose here, we go into Machina's root. That's what I'm guessing. Well, I'm not accepting the money. <laughs> I know that's a lot. Actually, that's only that's eight hundred and sixty dollars in U.S. money. Yeah, um, where we're we rejecting the money. It's pretty it's pretty clear to me that if we accept the money, that'll be shoehorning us onto the Machina route, or at least closer in that direction, so no. Sorry, we, we're not accepting your money. Machina, listen carefully. I don't want your money. I can't tell, though, if by picking this, we're going to be like, no, we're not going to be your father, or if we're like, we'll do it for free! <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. If you want to play house, I'll do it free of charge. I'm not the perfect human being you seem to think I am. I can't commit to becoming your father. It would be irresponsible of me to pretend I could. Yes! Good! But, if it's just playing at the role, I think even someone like me can handle it. No! No. You are not calling me that. Hmm, well, a pseudo-papa, I guess. Since you never learned what a family is, we'll try to figure it out together. Would that be enough? If you start calling me Papa in front of the other people, though, that's going to make things weird, so no doing that. Alright, then let's leave it at that. <laughs> no. No matter what we chose there, it would have done- what the heck? That said, I'd really prefer not to be called Papa this early in my life, and I think you mean fledgling. That's the feathers on an arrow. I take hold of Makina's outstretched hand and give it a quick shake. Most likely because of that half-eaten lollipop she's been carrying around, her palm is sticky and unpleasant to the touch. You've got plenty to learn, that's for sure. When you raise something, sometimes you're the one that grows the most. And when you teach someone, you're going to learn a lot in return. Or so my master told me once. At the time, those words didn't really resonate with me. But now, I'm starting... I think I'm starting to understand. Even so, when I think about the rocky road that lies ahead, I can feel the dull throb of an, in of an insipid headache stirring under my temples. 